Welcome to the Reptile Barn. This is part two of our Dubia Roach series. So uh, if you didn't catch part one, go ahead and go check that out if that's something you're interested in. This is part two. So today we're going to be talking about some other topics, some other uh, aspects of keeping Dubia Roaches. Uh, their food. <clears throat> I would say 85% of what we feed them is Rapashi Bug Burger powder. Okay, we don't even uh, put water in. We just give it to them as straight powder. Rapashi Bug Burger. It has been spectacular. Now, right now, we're out of Rapashi Bug Burger. So you saw Cheerios in there, plain Cheerios, not sugared anything, just plain Cheerios. Um, any organic produce, you know, long. There's long lists online, but almost any organic produce. Well, especially like, you know, some of the fruits they really like, leafy greens they do really well with. It needs to be organic, not because we're, you know, all snooty, but because uh, if it's not organic, it does have pesticides on it. And pesticides are specifically meant to kill bugs. You try and feed that to your bugs, what's going to happen? So we only give them organic anything. We're not going to give them anything that's not organic. And really, even organic isn't really enough. You want to be pretty certain that you're not giving your insect pesticides in their food. <laughs> that's a real quick way to wipe out your colony. But yeah, so produce, Cheerios, little bits of dog food every now and then would be fine. They're not big on meat. They're not really carnivorous at all. But, uh, you know, a little if, if you're out of, like we are right now, uh, we have been for like three days. Um, we have more coming, but it's just not here yet. So we've given them a little bit of dog food. Just to make sure they get enough protein, right? Because most of the you know the grains and the fruits and vegetables aren't going to give them much protein. They do need some protein, especially the babies or the, the moms. Um, but yeah, so it's not complicated to feed them. Uh, we just buy the tubs of Rapashi Bug Burger and we put in, for our tub here, this tub size here with this number of... Um, egg flats, we usually are putting in two big and kind of heaping scoops of Rapashi Bug Burger about every two or three days, and that seems to do really well for them. Plus, we supplement with, you know, produce and things like that and Cheerios. So uh, that's all we feed them, you know, it's just kind of lots of the same stuff we would eat, really. The, uh, even the bug burger is just, you know, alfalfa meal and random stuff that they've mixed to have the right amount of nutrients for insects. Water is very important. These are tropical. They, they like it fairly humid in there. We don't make it probably as humid as they would even like because we do not want to risk mold. But it's fairly humid just in our snake room. We don't do anything special to boost the humidity. But if you're in a real dry room that you're keeping your insects, I would do something to boost the humidity a little bit. But then uh, for water... So that we don't constantly have to be putting, you know, big chunks of wet fruit in there or something. Let me put the camera down for just a moment. This stuff is fabulous. See those little gel balls in there in the water? You can also get that at Rainbow Mealworms or many other places that sell insects. It's just little tiny crystals. You put them in water, they tell you the ratios, and within an hour it makes these incredible little little balls of water. <laughs> I mean, that's all it is. Look at this. See, I just scooped them right out. And we put those straight in there. There's nothing to it, really. Um, and they can just eat it, and it's basically like eating water. I love it. It doesn't make a mess. So what I do is, I push some of the egg crate back when I'm ready to feed them or something. I scoop everything to the side. You see an old shedded skin or right there of a, of a roach. I clean out a spot. Again, this is poop, yes, but it's not gross poop. It feels like sand. So I have a clean spot. Oh, there's a tiny little baby right there. Run away. I'll put the food up here and in this little divot around here, that's where I put the water crystals, okay? So they can come in, they drink, they eat, and then they go back to their little hiding spots. I do not separate sizes of my roaches. I don't. I don't have enough animals to make that necessary. I just 
when I need to feed an animal, I go through my tu my uh, egg crates and I pull out what I need, and that's it. The, the roaches themselves do better if you just leave them. I mean, it's real low maintenance. I probably spend less than five minutes a day maintaining my roaches, and this colony has been with us for maybe eight months, and they've, they've done absolutely fantastic. They're very productive. We feed off about 100 roaches a week, and we're overproducing still. We're producing more roaches than we are feeding off, so our colony of roaches is still growing. Um, we've about reached the capacity of how many will do well in this amount of cardboard here. Um, they're, they're pretty packed in there now, but our male to female ratio is good when we get too many males You want like one male to every five females and um, they see they tend to breed best that way um, And to keep that ratio we just feed off adult males when we need to um, and Let me show you the difference real quick between a male and a female just so you can know Let's find some here. So the big females are the big shiny ones the big shiny butts. The males have the big wings covering their back. I don't know how good my lighting is, but there's there's a male right there with the wings on his back. And there's a bunch of females down here. There's a female right there. Oh, male just walked into the frame. There's several females right next to each other. Adult breeding females. And there's a male. They look pretty different. All of the younger ones are not so shiny. They're kind of a more dull color. Even the ones that are pretty big once they've shed their skin for the last time, uh, they become full adults. They call them instars. It's just the you know the life phases of this particular type of insect, and then they turn shiny when they're a full adult, and then you know that they're an adult. Pretty easy to keep track of. Um, they are thirsty and hungry bugs. They eat and drink a lot. In fact, I'm going to put some more water crystals in now uh, before I put them away. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to it. We have decided not to uh, deep clean with soap. So when we're ready to deep clean, we pull out all the cardboard, we move all the bugs to a, a holding container. Uh, I pull out all of the poop and food residue, any shed skins of the of the roaches, and put them. Most of that goes in the trash, all that extra stuff. But I keep like a good couple handfuls of the poop because that's what we talked about before and then I use boiling hot water and I scrub out the tub with really really scalding hot water I scrub it really good get anything off the walls anything off the floor I do this maybe once every two months and sometimes during a deep clean I change out all the cardboard we never get mold uh, but just to make sure that everything is as sanitary as possible, sometimes we will then change out all the cardboard, even though it's still in good condition. We just change it out. It's not expensive. Uh, and my family goes through enough eggs that most of the time I don't even have to order any. It's just egg crate that we have kept back from our own egg use. It's It's been a lifesaver for us because buying and shipping live insects online uh, in the quantities we need would get expensive. And we don't want to do that. And so we're, we're trying to produce everything here that we possibly can. And it has been a great investment for us. Don't regret it in the slightest. Um, but, you know, I don't, I'm not really afraid of bugs. So I, I can see some people just not wanting to do that. Although then, you know, you're still having to handle them if you're going to feed them to your reptile. So uh, I don't know. We have loved it. Uh, I like working with them. It's kind of fun to feed them and watch them all swarm the food. Um... It's interesting because the moms actually protect their babies. It's an insect. I would have never imagined that. But uh, they kind of, when they're ready to give birth, so to speak, they push out this, this long tube, right? And the babies immediately come out of that tube, and they're tiny. And the moms will hover over them and follow them around for like a week, helping them find, you know, the food at the bottom and just keeping them safe. Some, occasionally, the big males... If they are really stressed out or hungry or something, they would eat a little baby roach. Um, and the moms protect them. And then when they're a little bigger and older, then they kind of go off on their own. But, you know, they're all inside the same box. So off on their own is relative. But uh, they do awesome. And the insects, uh, have nev we've never had a die-off where they like all get sick or anything like that. They've done really well. Uh, but, again, we keep their temperature, their humidity, their food, 
their housing, everything is sanitary, everything is stable, there's not big fluctuations or anything, so we have kind of a good setup for it. Um, we keep them nice and warm, again, like 85 to 90 degrees inside their enclosure here. And uh, our lizards love them, absolutely love them. Um, I would show you a feeding right now, but Little Blue just moved into his big cage, you know, five or six days ago, and he's still mad at me. <laughs> he, uh, I opened him up to spray him down today and give him some water, and uh, he tried to jump out of the cage. I had to grab him, and his claw caught me and, and cut me open pretty good. I was bleeding down my hand. Um, he didn't bite me or anything, but it's just his super sharp claws. So I'm not going to show you feeding right now, unfortunately, because he probably wouldn't eat for me. He's still ticked. He'll eat pieces of pinky mouse that I just leave in the cage, but he's not going to eat from me right now. Uh, it's going to take him a couple weeks to really calm back down, unfortunately. That's just, you know, the nature of these really uh, high-stress uh, lizards. But that's okay. Uh, he's a great animal. He loves his roaches. And, uh, yeah, so I hope that this was informational to some of you. Um, I know this was a requested video. That's why I wanted to get it done here. Uh, our colony here... We probably have a thousand roaches in this little bin. We just started a second bin in the other room um, in anticipation of, you know, in the future, probably in the next six to ten months, we're going to try and get some more lizards. So we need to up our colony here of, of feeders. And uh, that's all I can think of to tell you about Dubia roaches. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that if you do have questions or comments, you'll let me know. I'm I love interacting with the, the reptile community um, and we're up here in Alaska isolated for most of you guys who watch so uh, you know really online is our best way to interact so if you have questions or comments please let us know um, you know we're not fishing for compliments or likes or anything here I just I like to see you guys uh, responses to our videos because I always hope that they're helpful to somebody um, yeah so again, any other questions, please let me know. We uh, will keep you posted as we add more insects. We're just starting some mealworms. Uh, eventually, we'll also probably do hornworms. Uh, in the future, we'll probably do crickets because a lot of reptiles really like crickets. But our one foray into crickets was just a disaster with escapees. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle it. So <laughs> when we have a better setup, a, a different room, we'll probably add crickets again. But uh, yeah, till next time. We are the Reptile Barn.